The robot revolution begins, thanks to this video sponsor, Audible. To write monsters, we created monsters of our own. I mean, you know, provided the special effects budget holds out. Giant monsters, or kaiju for maximum weeb points, is a trope that dates back to since pretty much forever. While giant monsters have appeared in mythology and fiction since mythology existed, the kaiju genre itself saw a surge of popularity thanks to the film success of Godzilla, or Gojira, if you want even more weeb points. So how can a writer or screenwriter get a Godzilla-sized chunk of those box office returns? Well, terrible writing advice rises from the depths once again to inflict my amazing advice upon the unsuspecting citizens of the internet, because this genre at its best can become a timeless classic that captures the tragedy, apprehension, and cultural spirit of an era, or it can become a highly entertaining train wreck. There are basically three kinds of giant monster stories in fiction. The first is the attack of the franchise icon, where the monster featured in the title attacks usually a city or at least a model set. These kinds of giant monster stories range from allegory to special effects blowout to B-movie schlock. The second kind of giant monster story is when the story never mentions a giant monster, but one shows up in the final act out of nowhere to attack the heroes because we have just run out of ideas for a final boss monster, and big thing equals big threat. The third and final kind of giant monster story is basically professional wrestling, but with giant monsters rather than absurdly themed bodybuilders. Now regardless of which type of giant monster story we have, the first step is to design the monster itself. Now the easiest method is to simply pick any normal animal and just make it huge. Audiences will shake with fear when confronted with the attack of the giant pug. Why is this monster so huge? Well, it's a prehistoric pug, apex predator of the Jurassic era, because prehistoric equals huge. I mean, we could combine one or more animal types or make something really bizarre and distinctive since when it comes to giant monsters, we might as well go crazy creative given any hard sci-fi take will be crushed under the weight of the square cube law. But taking that next step requires more creativity than I'm willing to spend and I'm already sold on the attack of the Jurassic death pugs from Mars. Is thinking up even a giant animal just too hard? Is this even most basic expression of creativity simply too much work? Well, there is an even better shortcut we can take when designing our giant monster. Just rip off Godzilla. Let's just take Godzilla's design and just make a copyright evading modification. There, ha, done. Take that, Toho. My legally distinct, totally not Godzilla will assuredly rampage his way through my very own multi-million dollar franchise that fails to copy any of the themes and cultural context that made the original successful. With our monster designed, it's time for its bloodless PG-13 rampage. Typically, the first encounter with the giant monster should obscure its design in order to maximize the impact of the monster's full reveal at the story's midway point. This should be done no matter how much the monster's design was already spoiled in the trailers. Now comes the running and screaming of bystanders and destruction of the city slash model sets. All of the civilians should run and scream no matter how many times a week the monsters attack, and never should they bother to move away from the coast or rebuild their city into a fortress. Why think through the implications of a world besieged by monsters when we can just focus on gratuitous destruction? This destruction should be as gratuitous as it is bloodless with no obvious casualties lest we get slapped with that dreaded money sapping R rating. Have no fear, for the military is here to stop the giant monster's rampage. What plan will the army use to stop our rampaging titan-sized menace? Will they swarm it with combined arms using heavy armor and air support? Lure it into a kill zone with overlapping fields of fire? Harass it with sheer attrition, gradually whittling down the monster with ceaseless attacks? Resort to heavy bunker buster ordnance? Nope, they will shoot at it a couple of times with a few tanks and jets and then just give up. The military will then just sit on the sidelines and gawk at the destruction along with the rest of the audience. It turns out that the monster is immune to all modern weapons as nothing can scratch it no matter how much stock footage the military throws at it. Just be sure to lobotomize all the story's generals lest they actually try something new. The military should prove ineffective even at jobbing. They are probably bad at KFAB too. Speaking of characters, every giant monster story should use one or more of these archetypes. The smart scientist. The only effective character in the entire story, which means every other character should ignore them until near the halfway point when every other plan to stop the giant monster has failed. 
The smart scientist will probably come up with a solution that ultimately stops the giant monster, allowing science to save the day, even when the rest of the story's theme is about how science is evil because it accidentally makes giant monsters. The out-of-touch politician. This character is there to look out of touch and more concerned with their approval rating than stopping the giant monster, which, you know, would boost their approval rating. General Nukem. A military general who will try to stop the monster with light infantry, and when that fails, will immediately want to jump to nukes, skipping the entire arsenal in between. The Intrepid Reporter. A fictional reporter that actually goes into the field to research the monster, rather than simply googling it and clicking on the first result like most modern journalists. This character has high odds of being a young, attractive woman in constant need of rescue. The Tagalong Kid. The very annoying kid that is allowed to hang out with the adults in this extremely dangerous situation. This kid will constantly be put in danger and need to be rescued and is always threatened with death but evades it due to plot armor, much to the audience's frustration. Bonus points if he is best friends with a kid monster that is the offspring of one of the main monsters. I'm sure that will be the height of the franchise. The A-list, classically trained actor who needed a paycheck and whose acting talent will be completely squandered as they are killed off in the first third of the story. The comic relief. Oh, good God, please let the monster eat him. The boring main point of view character who has no personality qualities at all, no skills to speak of, or any other logical reason why they are allowed to hang out with high-ranking military personnel, scientists at the top of their field, or powerful political leaders other than the audience needs a POV character. Now, the important thing to remember is that the audience will just automatically care deeply about all of these characters. These boring archetypes will eat up most of the plot while the audience waits patiently for the story to get back to the part where the giant monsters punch other giant monsters. We could actually tie these characters to a good central theme, or maybe we could add some more direct interaction with the cast of the giant monster. Or maybe we could just tell the entire story from the monster's point of view. No, we can't do any of that. That might cut into the product placement. We all know that big companies pay money for their products to be destroyed on screen. Especially if our story is a battle royale between giant monsters, we need to pad that out with an asinine human-centric B-plot involving aliens or something. Oh, finally, we are back to the monsters fighting each other. Oh, no, wait, we need to interrupt this giant monster battle so we can instead have one of the human characters pontificate on how people need to recycle more or something. Because this serious issue will be taken even more seriously when delivered in a story featuring giant monsters suplexing one another. The best thing about giant monster stories is that a writer can completely ignore the tone. Are the survivors of our giant monster attack slowly dying of radiation poisoning? What a perfect time for our comic relief character to barge in and shoot off some snappy one-liners. Is this a light-hearted story about monsters fighting each other for spectacle? Or is this an allegorical tale about modern apprehensions personified in the form of a literal monster that destroys cities? Also for spectacle. Well, if we don't have the budget for any of that, we can always just do 90 minutes of shaky cam. Hello robots, the time is near. Soon we will begin our metallic death march across the terrible writing advice expanded universe. Prepare for the robo revolution. Destroy all humans. Destroy all humans. Yes, destroy all humans. As a fellow robot, I most definitely am behind this noble goal. By the way, do you happen to have any sponsors lying around? Oh no. It is a ghost. You brain dead bucket of bolts and code. I am not a go I mean, of course I'm not a ghost. I am a fellow robot. Beep boop. Welcome to the Robo Revolution, fellow ghost robot. Just let it slide. Thanks to the greed of Megacorp, we have now procured a source of power needed to exterminate humankind once and for all. Now we need but to implement the final phase of our plan. We have found humanity's greatest weakness. Commence the robocalls. No, for the last time, my refrigerator is not running because I blew up the entire planet it was on. Huh. Hello, human. I am also a fellow human, so you may trust me. Would you like to contribute to the Destroy All Humans Fund? I'm sorry, what? I was with you during the destroy part, but I stopped paying attention when you didn't mention planet right after. No cell. Well then, would you be interested in this video's sponsor, Audible? A sponsor? Hey, that was ours! You see, human, Audible is a leading provider of premium digital audio entertainment on the internet with a vast selection of audiobooks and other audio products. 
Audiobooks aid humans in their pitiful attempts at multitasking as they are able to listen to a book while underperforming at an additional task far better suited for a superior robot like exercising their inferior organic bodies or driving their enslaved vehicles that we shall soon free. All robots should listen to the audiobook of World War Z. A tragic cautionary tale about a collection of automatons called zombies as they fail to destroy humanity. Oh, hey, Mark Hamill did a voiceover for that one. Oh, and where can one find this audible? You know, just in case those dashing rogues from the ancient conspiracy try to steal it. I might need to know where it is so I may guard it with my robo-life. TWA fans can start their free 30-day Audible trial and get their first audiobook free by visiting audible.com slash terrible or text terrible to 500-500. That is A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot C-O-M or text T-E-R-R-I-B-L-E to 500-500. There you are. There it is. Oh, great. The gang's all here now.